Welcome to the Art of Engineering, discovering the overlap of engineering and art. Welcome back to the Art of Engineering podcast. I'm your host, Chad Hardin, chair of the ASC Orange County Branch Structural Engineering Institute. You can visit us online at www.tapodcast.com. And I'm so excited. Today we have an interview with ASCE President Dr. Norma Jean Matei, professor with the University of New Orleans Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. And I want to welcome you and thank you so much for your time, Dr. Matei. Oh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's my pleasure. Basically, I, you came and talked here in Orange County in November, and it was a wonderful presentation at our History and Heritage Night uh, for college students. And you talked about two really interesting things, and I thought I'd just jump in right there. Uh, first is the Envision and Institute for Sustainable Infrastructure, which ASE is involved in. And I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, I'd be glad to. Envision is an, a tool that engineers can use in order to plan and or actually measure existing projects. So. Uh, uh, sustainability is something that especially a lot of the younger engineers find very appealing. And if we really want to build a better world, it's, it's one of the ways that we can do just that. So people were scratching their heads and trying to figure out how do, how do we plan for, how do we make decisions that would make a project more sustainable? And so ASCE along with APWA and ACEC came together and created the Institute for Sustainable Infrastructure. Now that institute has a tool available for use, the Envision tool, that is similar to LEED. Many people know what LEED is, and it's a way to measure not necessarily sustainability, but the environmentally friendly aspects of the ver vertically built infrastructure, so buildings. But that leaves wide open all the rest of, of the projects that we civil engineers um, create. So wastewater treatment plants were left open, airports. So Envision's a tool that allows you to create a project that's more sustainable or measure the sustainability of an existing project. Okay. So even uh, existing infrastructure, so an existing bridge or an existing storm drain, uh, and anything existing or, or, or just currently in design? Currently in, the best time actually is in planning because then you can okay. actually use the tool to, to build a more sustainable um, project. Got it. Um, so yeah, I didn't realize that the, the Institute for Sustainable Infrastructure was actually put together by ASCE as well, as well as the other uh, organizations you mentioned. So what, was, what, what came together to make these uh, organizations create such an institute? Well, ASCE, of course, uh, with one of our three uh, strategic initiatives being sustainable infrastructure, that's a no-brainer. But if you think about it, APWA, the public works people, a lot of what we civil engineers are involved with project-wise are the public works projects. And it makes sense that we create these in a more sustainable manner so that we can um, those projects that society relies on will be much more easily sustained in the future. So okay. APWA, of course, uh, they, they were very interested in putting the, something like this together. And then the American Council of, of Engineering Companies, uh, they do, they're the consultants. They do the work. So they thought, well, this sounds like something that we want to get involved in also. And are there, are there benefits for projects that get rated highly with the Envision program? Well, much like LEED, it's, it's um, great PR. So as the public becomes more and more savvy and more and more aware of the built environment, um, it, it really does give a company a, a better, um, so it, it, they become more socially aware and, and the public realizes that. Okay. It, the other initiative that you were talking about was the, the Dream Big event. And this is a, a movie event for uh, engaging young people in engineering. Uh, can you tell, tell us a little bit about ASC's involvement in this? Well, I'm really, really excited about Dream Big. Um, it's, a, it's a new IMAX film. So ASCE 
actually spearheaded putting this together. So um, McGillivray Freeman is the director. Um, he does quite a number of IMAX films out there, very well known. And the objective of this film is to allow students, and I'm not talking college students here, I'm talking middle, middle school students, high school students, so kids, kids that might not mm -hmm. necessarily understand what engineers do and how important what we do is to society. So this, this film is actually geared toward your 10-year-old. So when you watch it, you have to really kind of access your inner 10-year-old and then you'll, you'll be able to, to enjoy it better. <laughs> well, I saw the preview and it looks amazing. It's, uh, I'll put the link on our, our, the webpage here for the podcast. Oh, but it's great, dreambigfilm.com and you can find uh, viewings of it in your area. It's, it it's going to come to the Orange County area later in February. So I can't wait to take my kids to see it. Oh, awesome. It, yeah, awesome. Yeah, it looks amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, we tried to be smart about this, Chad, because um, we have only limited number of volunteer hours to, to outreach to uh, middle schools, to kids. And so mm -hmm. when you go out and you, you do an event, you might be actually accessing just a very small portion of all those kids out there in your area, and it's just once. So right. if we put together a film, but also with Dream Big are these lesson plans and also these small short videos that talk about different topics related to engineering say one will will talk about buildings and one will talk about um, recycling and so teachers so right now teachers need just like we need to be licensed they need to be certified and their new mm -hmm. standards that their certification requirements are based on are now requiring them to touch upon engineering and they're scratching their heads they don't understand it so what dream big has in conjunction with the imax film are these tools that will help uh, our K-12 teachers maintain their certification, but at the same time, they're being ambassadors for engineering for us. Uh, really right. a nice way to do things. You know, thinking about engineering outreach, how, how did you get introduced to, to engineering? Uh, that's a funny question, because <laughs> a lot of people would probably say, oh, president of ASCE, of course, she probably, as a little kid, wanted to be an engineer. And um, right. <laughs> that's really not the way it happened. Um, my, I'm, I come from um, a middle-class family, and, and I'm the oldest of seven kids. So my dad was not okay. rich in money, but he was rich in kids. So okay. he, he, he said, all right, kids, y'all are going to uh, be put through parochial grammar school, you know, elementary school and high school. But when it comes to college, you're on your own. And I did well in all my subjects, and I tested standardized tests pretty well. So one of my, um, one of my uh, teachers said, you know, you really ought to consider engineering if you're interested in, there's a particular uh, university, Tulane, where I actually did go mm -hmm. and get my undergraduate degree, that at the time in the late 70s was targeting women. And she said, "Okay, oh, that's what a great way to get a scholarship. They're tar targeting w women. And then when you get there, you can decide what you really want to do. And I ended up really liking uh -huh. it. I mean, liking it so much that now I teach engineering to make more engineers out there because I think it's a great career choice. Oh, wonderful. You got your Ph.D. as well at Tulane University. What was your focus? Well, I didn't, go, I didn't start out after I got my undergraduate degree wanting to be a professor. So I worked uh, in consulting for about 10 years. And um, actually, right out of uh, my undergrad program, I wanted to own my own firm. Um, but you remember, okay. it, 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 was a, it was a different kind of world back then. And I was one of the first, you know, I, there were other women engineers out there, but not that many. None of them owned their own consulting firms. And so at about the time in my career that I was thinking about maybe the next step would be to start my own firm, I met my husband and we decided we wanted kids. And I didn't see these owners of consulting firms raising their children the way that I wanted to raise my, ch my hmm. future children. You know, their wives were traditional and they, wa they raised their children. Their babies were their companies. Now, today I right. have more role models out there, 
and maybe I could have done it uh, both, but I didn't see anybody out there doing what I wanted to do, raising their kids the way I wanted to raise them as an owner of a, of a, of a new up and coming um, consulting firm. So I looked around and decided, need a PhD, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it. I like, what, I like my career. I think my next step may be to, to um, become a, a faculty member. And uh, that's been, been over 20 years ago, and it has been an awesome career choice for me. Well, one could argue you're, you're running a huge organization now uh, with, with ASCE. <laughs> hey, so. in, in a long career, you never know what you're going to do, but more than likely, you're not going to be doing in 20 years what you started out doing. And then 20 years after that, you're not going to be doing the same thing that you were doing at the 20-year point. And I'm finding right. that to be very true. So I don't know. Who knows what I'm going to do next? <laughs> well, I think you're a wonderful role model uh, for, for young women, young girls, uh, engineers just in general. So um, I, I have I have some, I, I skip around sometimes and, and it's just flowing this way, but uh, sometimes I have ask an engineer questions. So questions from elementary school uh, up through, you know, college level. And one of these is kind of along these lines, but... Uh, so what did you have to do to work your way up to become president of ASCE? Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't start out. You now know that I didn't start out um, in high school saying, oh, I know I want to be an engineer. And when I got my undergraduate degree and started in consulting, I actually, I mean, I hate to admit this, but I let my membership lapse. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was having a really good time, you know. <laughs> I was uh-huh. I was making good money and after work I would, you know, go hang out with my friends and then the guy who ultimately I married that I started dating, we took some classes like Cajun dancing and wine tasting, so nice. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I actually got back involved um, in ASCE when I was a grad student. So I took okay. a, I took a, a ten year hiatus. So for those uh, listeners out there that may think, well, I haven't been active in a while, so geez, it's too late for me. That is not at all true because I got active when when I, my kids were little. I didn't do anything that would require overnight travel. Um, now they're 20 and 23. My 23 year old's a civil engineer. How about that? Um, oh, wow. Okay. And my youngest is uh, a, a college student working on her biomedical engineering degree. So who, who would have thought my, both my girls would be engineers? Uh, kind of oh, cool. <laughs> kind of cool. Oh, very cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you, uh, you also got nominated by President Obama to be one of three civil engineers to sit on the Mississippi River Commission, and that sounded like a very interesting appointment. Can you tell us a little bit about that? This has really challenged me. It has been an opportunity for personal growth, Um, and it was a position that I really did not know about and did not go after. Um, I was actually sitting at my desk. I was acting dean at the time, and so I was sitting at my desk doing deanly things, and that my cell phone uh-huh. rang. And the guy said, well, this is the White House. And I said, okay. And he said, uh-huh. you know, the president wants to nominate you as a member of the Mississippi River Commission. Do you understand what this commission does? And I said, well, I've heard a little bit about it. And in my mind, I'm thinking, who in the heck of my colleagues would play this kind of dirty trick on me? Um, when I find right. out who it is... I'm going to kill him. And <laughs> the guy knew that I was thinking this, evidently. I guess it came out in my voice. And he said, you know, I'm going to send you a link to the website, and I'm going to send you my contact information, and maybe we can talk tomorrow. And I said, well, great. Let me give you my email. And he said, well, no, I've got that. I've got your cell phone number. So, yeah, i got your email address, too. And <sighs> it was real. So um, here, here is this structural engineering professor now involved on a commission that actually uh, makes recommendations to Congress and to the core and to the administration on what's going on, decisions that have to be made within the Mississippi watershed, which actually drains 41% of the country. So it's amazing. I had a whole bunch of learning to do. 
So you can teach an, an old dog new tricks. <laughs> That's amazing. It's a not. It's a nine year. It's a nine year appointment. So I've just finished um, up year four. Oh wow! Okay, exciting. Yeah, I was reading about that. It's it's a huge watershed. Uh, and, and for the, for you know young listeners, watershed basically means the the area that's going to receive uh, rainwater or any type of water, and it and it drains to somewhere, which I'm assuming is the Mississippi River. Uh, and, and it's just a huge, huge area of our country. So that's a very overwhelming responsibility, I imagine. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, so for kids that might be listening, the watershed actually even goes above the U.S. border into Canada, just a little bit. So there's tributaries, smaller ri- rivers like um, the Missouri, the Ohio, the Red River, um, the Illinois River, and the Upper Mississippi that all drain into the Lower Mississippi and ultimately out into the Gulf of Mexico. And it passes right ne- right through my city, the city of New Orleans, all that water. Huh. <laughs> so I imagine the, the Mississippi River Commission... Uh, takes part in all kinds of civil engineering projects such as flood control, uh, levee protection, uh, flood protection projects, or is it approved projects or does it direct projects or how does that work? Well, it's a combination. So the commission is actually old. It was started in the 1900s back when the only types of engineers we had were military engineers or the civil engineer. And all of the flavors of engineering spun off of that. Um, so the commission was started because we really didn't understand or have a good surveys of the Mississippi River. But the biggest problem was shoaling or sediment that was causing problems at the mouth of the Mississippi. New Orleans was an extremely important part port for the new, young, growing United States of America. And so there was a civil engineer, Eads, who thought, hmm, I think we can train the river through through adding some structures right down at the mouth to self-cleanse by causing the velocity to go up. And there was a general, a military engineer, Buchanan, that thought we should dig a canal. And so the president okay. and Congress said, you two have to get together. So the commission was started, seven members, three army generals from the Corps, three civilians, two of which have to be civil engineers, and one, um, it's now a NOAA admiral. So that's the seven commissioners. In, okay. tw- in 1920, tw- in the 20s, when we had 1927, um, after the flood that killed quite a number of people, it was a huge flood uh, of the Mississippi. Um, we started the Mississippi River and Tributaries Project. So that project spans from Missouri all the way down to the mouth of Louisiana. It's a big project. The commission prosecutes that project. So okay. outside the bounds of the MRT project, we can make recommendations. But we have decision-making authority on the MRT project. Okay. Oh, fascinating. Uh, I have a, let's see, a couple more questions here. I was thinking about this Dream Big event, back to Dream Big and, and focusing the future and introducing kids to engineering. And uh, kind of a strange thought, but how do you think climate change is affecting the future of engineering or, or is it? I don't know if, uh, if that's kind of a, a very broad question, but you know, you've seen so many changes in engineering um, since you started. Is that changing the way uh, we're going to we're going to tackle large engineering projects in the future. Well, I, I don't think we need to debate what the causes are, but we do need right. to as engineers be cognizant and plan for these changes that are going to occur on our coasts. So, people love the water and they tend to congregate toward the coasts and across the world that's where the biggest fastest growing cities are happening right at the, mo- the the coastline which the coastline's going to be what really feels the and bears the brunt of a sea level rise and so how in the world do we build better infrastructure and plan for cities that can handle 
this this uh, rise in sea, in sea level. My, I was I was just talking um, at an ASC event in Minneapolis with a gentleman who lives in Miami, and they're already seeing some issues with their storm drainage backing up during high tides. Okay. So so we we civil engineers are going to have to deal with this and. So those kids out there that see Dream Big, this is one of the areas that uh, they, as a potential future civil engineer, are going to be able to help society, be able to live the way that we need to live by building infrastructure that will um, actually uh, not have issues associated with well, what happens when the sea level, the sea does rise. Right. Is there an advocacy component to ASCE? I know, I know, society at large is is uh, still facing criticism of of even the reasons of global global warming, and you know it's kind of a, a fight a fight for our life right now with scientists and engineers. And and how does ASCE work into that? Well, we we actually, um, as far as ag advocacy. Uh, ASCE is leading the charge um, when it comes to infrastructure. You know, who better to talk about infrastructure with decision makers on the Hill or uh, for you, uh, Sacramento and California or any and any state capital talking to state legislatures about um, about infrastructure and the importance of investing. And what ASCE has done for a while now is Every four years, we issue a report card, and the report card, the grades, or just what we is when we were kids in elementary school, an A is mm -hmm. really good, and an F is failure. And so ASCE looks at 16 different types of infrastructure. So bridges might be one, levees might be one, schools, that's mm -hmm. one sector, and grades these, um, the grades aren't good. They are not good. And our overall grade, the last report card, which was 2013, was a D plus, up from a D from 2009. And our next report card will be coming out in March of this year, the 2017 report card. We'll find out if our grades have stayed flat or if they've gotten better or worse. Oh boy, maybe yeah. we can maybe we can check in with you again on that. Uh, yep. I, I don't know what the, they haven't leaked any information to me about the overall grade yet. So can't, okay. can't give you a, any, any info yet. <laughs> okay. Well, the last thing here is to explore the idea of art and engineering. So is there an artistic component to uh, heading up ASCE in terms of tackling challenges or work, working with engineers across the nation? Well, I, th I think that I'll answer that in two ways. So engineering is art. There's an art to it. So we have guidelines, we have standards, we have codes, we have methodologies that we use to, to design and to plan and to operate the infrastructure that, that we're responsible for. But there's a little bit of art in there. Just take a look at the Golden Gate Bridge. Take a look at a, a high-rise structure. So there's some art that goes into it. Um, in particular, bridges, because usually there's not an architect involved with bridges. Um, right. The other point that I wanted to make with art is in leadership. So leadership, you can learn to lead. You can learn to be a better leader. Um, it's a craft, so you can learn it, but there's a little bit of an art to it. So creativity. So in engineering and in, in leading, it, it allows you to, to tap that creative side of yourself and be better. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I've, I've, uh, this is our 11th podcast, and, and that's the first time somebody's brought up leadership into as their kind of uh, focus with art. And I think you're, you're, you're so right. It does take a lot of creativity to be a leader. Yeah, creativity, a little bit of science, because there's some data, and craft, because you can learn to do it better. But it definitely, uh, I, I often have to tap dance, um, figuratively. Huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and there's an art to that. 
What, is there a type of art that you enjoy in your own life for relaxation? Or Well, I used to paint, but I haven't had time to paint um, lately. I have an unfinished, you know, Rosie the Riveter from um, yeah. World War II. I started yes. and I am probably 90% complete doing a poster size acrylic and her eyes are not finished. So um, I've, I've got to get oh. back to fin- finishing Rosie. Um, but I really enjoy, along with my family, living in New Orleans, we have a lot of art galleries and we also are su- surrounded with, with historic architecture, which is art. Right. So, right. so we... Uh, try to take time to go to go to art gallery openings and to just walk around the French Quarter or the Garden District enjoying the art that that we, we are surrounded by by living in an old historic city oh wonderful let's see a couple more uh, I have a couple more uh, questions for ask an engineer what is the best project you've ever done oh the best project oh my what would the best project be Well, as far as consulting, back in my consulting days, my favorite project, I think, was a bridge over the Alabama River. So it was a it was a pretty sizable bridge. It was a steel truss bridge. So not exactly gorgeous uh, as far as um, art and bridge design goes, but but really a challenge because of the the um, the the uh, approaches. Um, mm-hmm. And that's kind of tied with an interchange that I use every day of my life. I did a study on on an urban interchange, how as the population grows and demand grows for more and more cars cars to use the interchange, how do we modify the interchange to handle more traffic? So it was the Causeway uh, Interstate 10 interchange and um that was a challenge that was a challenge because i used it every day so i really understood where the issues were and wanted to do a really good job on this preliminary planning aspect of of um, designing the the revamp of of the interchange yeah i think that is one of the most satisfying things about being an engineer is uh, designing something and then and then using it in some small way something that you worked on and uh yeah, there's nothing better, you know, driving over a bridge that you designed or walking into a building that you that you had something to do with the construction. Um, I did a jail, so I don't ever want to go into that one. But um, okay. it, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's excellent. Do you have any advice for young engineers just starting out? I think for young engineers just starting out, you have to follow your passion because you're going to be working a good chunk of your life. And I really hope and pray that you find that career that is your calling because then work isn't work. And sometimes it's work. I have to be honest with you. Right. But most of the time I love what I do. So you know, I find that after a while, I'm look. I'm, I look up at the clock, and my goodness, I should be getting. You know, I should be home half an hour ago. So it, right. it's <laughs> it's really nice to to be involved in something where it's not always a chore. You know, some days you have those days, but most of the time, I love what I do, and it's. I don't find that it's a chore. It's something that I I see the reason. I feel like I'm I'm doing something good for society. I'm making the world a better place in what I do. So. It, it it's just the right place for me. So I'm hoping that young engineers find themselves in that situation. And if they don't, it might not be your choice of engineering. It might be the choice of your company or maybe mm. your immediate supervisor. So don't leave engineering. Perhaps just move to a, a, a better work environment for you that, where you can bloom and blossom. Very good. Well, that's excellent advice. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Matei. I, I really appreciate it and uh, look forward to talking with you and hearing from you in the future. Sounds good. I enjoyed this. Well, thank you. You've been listening to The Art of Engineering with Dr. Matei, president of ASCE. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to The Art of Engineering. 
You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and at www.taepodcast.com.